stored in his heart. And that the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what his heart is full of. Amen. You may be seated. Reverend Wilson uh, told me as I explained to him my struggle with this with this sermon this week, and uh, he gave me some very good advice. He said, "All that you need to you need to preach a series. <laughs> that ain't no sermon." Amen. Our topic for this morning is the heart manages the mouth. Well, well. the heart, heart. manages the mouth. All right. And my subtopic is, the tongue is a tool, a torch, and a telltale. It's a tool, it's a torch, and it's a telltale. Every time we open up our mouth, we let people look into our hearts and minds. Some of us said that great minds discuss ideas, mm -hmm. average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. The church that James was writing to was full of small-minded people mm -hmm. who gossip about each other. Mm -hmm. They tore one another apart. In James 1 and 26, he said, if anyone considers themselves religious, and yet does not keep a tight ring on their tongue, they deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. I pray this morning that all that are here, that we can together continue to cultivate and develop our spiritual maturity. I believe that these scriptures can help us to become better. Come on. As we move forward. Well, 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 well. And remember, I, I don't want to, I'm not preaching at you. I want to preach to you because I'm talking about myself too. All right, all right. I believe that every sermon is for the for the preacher first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now look, if we're if we're interested in being more like Jesus, this message can help us. All right. If we will receive it and practice it. All right. As we embark on this journey of understanding, let us focus on the words that we speak. The power that they hold and the control that we must exercise over them. Mm -hmm. Our main idea for this sermon is simple, but so profound. You see, mature Christians control their speech. All right. This is not a suggestion, but a command. It's a divine directive that we are called to follow. Mm -hmm. It's a mark of spiritual maturity. Yes, sir. A sign that we are growing in our faith Come and on, becoming man. more like Christ. Go ahead. Go ahead. Some people think they have the right to just speak their mind. Yes, sir. But as mature Christians, we don't have a right to say anything mm -hmm. we want. That's right. That's right. That's good. That's good. Good. We are known by our words. May God give us the strength and guide us as we strive to control our speech and become more like Christ. And like it or not, we are commanded to forgive. Come on. It's quiet. Yeah. We, 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 got, we got to stop bringing up stuff from you. Yes, sir. Last week, last year, 20 years ago, 30 years about what somebody did. Right. I asked this morning if God's word here will illuminate our path and lead us to controlling our speech. James, here, let's, let's, let's walk through these scriptures here for a bit. James 3 and 1, James here warned about the aspiration to teach, Sister Emma. Because teachers have a great responsibility. Come on. Their words and example affect other people's spiritual lives. Good. Good. If we're teaching, or if you're in church leadership, no, right. how are we affecting those we teach? 
teach and lead. All right, man. All right. Listen, unless the person has control of their tongue, they should not be in positions of leadership in the church. Amen. James, the brother of Jesus, That's knew right. this. That's it. Verse 2, he wrote, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Able to keep your whole body in shape. When James used the word perfect, he's not talking about us being flawless. Sure. But about being mature. Yes, sir. Fully developed yes, in character. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. a tall order. Yes, sir. But it's not impossible. Yes, sir. These words remind us of, the, of our human frailty. Well, mm -hmm. well. Our propensity to stumble and fall. James spends the first few verses of this chapter through talking about the power of the tongue. Controlling our tongues is one of life's greatest challenges. Yes, All right. Someone has observed the reason that a dog has so many friends is that it wags its tail more than its tongue. Right. Come on now. <laughs> what we say and don't say both are important That's good, sir. to control our speech we must not only say the right words at the right time but also rein in our desire to say what we should mm -hmm. an untamed tongue including gossiping, insulting belittling, bragging, manipulating teaching what is false, exaggerating complaining, flattering and lying but mature Christians control their speech. Now, now, let's break it down here. First, we need to understand that our words reflect our heart. That's it. That's right. That's it. That's right. That's right. Oh, my goodness. That's it. That's it. Oh, my goodness. That's it. That's our words reflect our heart. All right. All right. The, the heart manages the tongue or the mouth. The tongue, I want you to know, is a tool to be used for good or bad. Let's take a look here at the power of the tongue. And verse 3 says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey, we can turn the whole animal. Yes. Verse 4 says, our ships is an example, although they are so large and driven strong by strong winds, they are steered by a small rudder. Wherever the pilot once it go. Mm -hmm. This rudder, though small, has the power to steer a ship yes, in any direction. It can guide a ship safely through calm waters yes, and through turbulent seas. Yes, sir. It can navigate the ship towards the, its destination, or it can lead it astray. Our tongues are like this rudder. That's right. That's right. Or like this bit mm -hmm. in the mouth of a horse. They are small, but they hold immense power. They can speak words of love and kindness, words that uplift and encourage. They also can speak words of anger and hatred, yeah. words that hurt and destroy. Mm -hmm. Just as the rudder controls the ship, our tongue controls our bodies. Just as the ship's captain must control the rudder, we must control our mouths. Likewise, in our lives, the tongue is a tool to be used for good. Uh, we can get everything else under control if we just use our tongue as a tool for good. He says in verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member and boast great things. It can make mountains out of molehills. It makes promises sometimes that it cannot keep. Come on, come on. It makes claims that are often untrue. Come on. Consider what a great, a great as a forest fire is set on by a small spark. The tongue also, besides being a tool, it's a torch. Mm. A world of iniquity. Mm. And it causes big fires. Big fire. It causes problems, drama, and pain. The tongue is a problem, church. Come on, come on, come on. A world of iniquity is full of sin. Mm. Mm. The tongue is so set among its members in verse 6 that it defiles the whole body. Oh, it sets the fire on the course of nature, uh, set on by the fire of hell. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the, I said the term is the torch. Come on now. Listen, what comes out ignites our passions. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh, got us thinking and talking about and doing things we had no business doing. Oh, Set on fire by hell. A lot of what comes out of our mouths are set on by hell. Influence by hell. So how do we put out a fire? With water. All right. The water of God's word. Come on. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, man. Before we speak, we need to remember our words come from one of two locations. Uh, did they come from heaven or did they come from hell? Uh, uh, in either way, uh, uh, are they influenced by God's power and presence? Mm. Or is what, you come out, what comes out of your mouth influenced by hell? Mm -hmm. And you know, a whole lot of folks don't know the difference. Mm. They can't make the distinction, and so they'll speak whatever comes to mind. their mouth. Wow. And then have the audacity to say, Well, I'm speaking the truth. And this is how I feel. <laughs> but Proverbs 29 and 11 says, Fool, give full vent of their rage. Yeah, but the wise bring calm yeah. in the end. Mm -hmm. The King James Version says, A fool vents all of their anger. Mm -hmm. But a wise person holds it back. Yeah. Proverbs 14 and 15 says, A fool loves to talk. But they hate to listen. This reminds me of the groom. As a groom on his honeymoon, who takes his bride by the hand and said, Now, honey, now that we're married, uh, I hope you won't mind if I mention a few little defects that I've noticed about you. So the, the bride says, not at all. Uh, the bride sweetly replies, uh, it was those little defects that kept me from getting a better husband. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Listen, <clears throat> the devil will put words in our mouth. Uh -huh. And, 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 and listen, some, some folk don't have no filter. Mm. <laughs> they lack the ability to filter what they should be saying and what they shouldn't be saying. All right. Everything is not the right thing to say. All right. Some people say, well, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, but just because something is true doesn't mean you should speak it all the time. All right, all right. There's some truth about all of us well, that we don't want repeated. Well, <laughs> then James <laughs> talks about the fact that the tongue cannot be tamed. Mm -mm -mm. He says, he says it very frankly. He says, it's untamable. <laughs> it's, untam it's a torch. Verse 7, every kind of beast, it's talking about every kind of beast and bird of the reptile creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. And think about that. All kinds of animals have been tamed by men. You can go to a circus. You can go to Sea World. We can go and we can see on television shows or whatever, carnival, whatever, huge animals, small animals, every kind of animal where they've been tamed by I man. And yet James says, every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed. But verse 8 says, but no human being can tame the tongue. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's restless evil. Full of deadly poison. And then, and then we can't control big things, okay? We can do big animals, but we can't control that little red thing in our mouth. And you know, not, nothing worse than being around a person who can't control their tongue. But now, some people haven't learned to shut it down, to bring it in, close it up, and it's problematic. 
Yeah, even in the church. Well, what's up? Yeah, yeah. yeah, even in the church. Yeah. Amen. Some of the craziest and meanest thing you ever heard. Come to a church meeting. <laughs> <laughs> can take the tongue. He said it's unruly evil. And the word unruly right here means that it, it has no constraints. Mm. Uh, it's a torch. Mm -hmm. We need to be careful around people who have no constraints. Well, mm -hmm. uh, they'll say just anything. All right, uh, some folk are spewing out poison mm. over other people. Mm. Right. Uh, uh, over their marriages. Mm. Spewing out poison over their kids. Spewing out poison even on themselves. Yes, sir. You gotta watch what you say, because you hearing it. Mm -hmm. You think it isn't going in garbage in? What? Garbage out. We gotta learn to speak hope mm -hmm. to ourselves. We should pause before we speak and ask ourselves, is what I want to say, is it necessary? Is it true? Is it kind? Mm -hmm. Satan uses words and speech to divide us. Yes, he does. And to pit us against one another. Yes, he does. And you know what? The damage cannot be stopped no. once it's spoken. No. No. Thinking, I'll apologize later. Mm -hmm. Because even if we do, the scars yes, sir. remain. Yes. Yes. Most of us can't forget something really bad that somebody said to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The words are like fire. Yes, sir. We can never control nor reverse the damage that they do. <laughs> if no human can tame the tongue, then preacher, why should we even bother trying? Because the Holy Spirit. Come on, yeah. Can help us with that church. All right, all right. That's right. That's right. The Holy Spirit can give us the power. That's right. That's right. To filter what we say. Yes. Yes. Three, now to twelve, we are made in God's image, but the tongue is a constant reminder of our sinful nature. Mm. But we we come here, we come to church, we Bible study, study because we want to grow closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right, right. We want to be more like him. Yeah. Right. Jesus said in Luke 6, 45, King David, out of the abundance of the heart, out, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. Yes. The NIV says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Well, well. We open our mouths and Spit out all that negative. That, that's where it's coming from. It's coming from a heart. You know, Jesus, a heart fixing a mind regulator. Yes, he is. Listen, whatever is inside of us, eventually going to come out. That's right. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yeah, brother. You want to know where somebody's coming from? Just, just, just listen to them for a while. Just, just observe. Without any thinking. Mm -hmm. 
It's just automatic. Because that's what's there. But only what is helpful for building up others up according to their needs that it might benefit those who listen. This is a call, church, to use our words wisely. To build up rather than to tear down. Come on. So don't forget the tongue is a torch. And you set stuff on fire. You set a whole forest on fire. Come on. Our passions, our words have the power to ignite passions to stir up emotions. And they cause a whole lot of conflict. Yes, sir. But I want you to know they also have the power to bring life Come on, and hope. Yes, sir. Control of our speech means speaking truth in love. Ephesians 4 and 15 says, Tell me, tells us that speaking the truth in love, we will grow, we will grow to become in every aspect the mature body of him Come on. who is the head yes, that is Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Speaking the truth in love is not about avoiding conflict. No. It's about doing it in a way that shows respect yeah. and care for the other person. Amen. And listen, controlling your speech is a mark of maturity. Yes, it reflects What's in our heart? It's a stark reminder of the influence that words have. And you know, our tongue can be used to guide and direct, to encourage, to build up. But it can also be used to tear down, to spread lies. We decide how we use this tool. And then lastly, we need to understand that our tongue is a telltale. I think back in the old days, I think you, you were telltale. Isn't that what we say? You, you a telltale. A preacher, what is a telltale? It, it reveals our secrets. It's something, it's something of somebody that knows and they tell. Huh? Your friend told the secret. Mm, right. Your heart. Mm. Oh, it announces the secrets. <laughs> it reveals what's in our hearts. Mm. Come on. It tells mm. to others what we won't want them to know. Well, right. Right. <laughs> Jesus said in Matthew 12, Therefore, for the mouth speaks with the hardest will. If our hearts are full of bitterness, anger, bad attitude, negativism, then that's what our words will reflect. Yes, sir. If our hearts are full of love and kindness and grace, our words will reflect that. And then James doesn't just highlight the problem of an unruly tongue, but he also gives us the solution. Yes, sir. And he says it, it requires constant reliance on the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. It's, it, 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 and that comes when we as Christians uh, come to the point of yielding yes, to the Lord in full surrender yes. and sincerity. The problem is we like maintaining control. We want to say what we say when we say it the way we want to say it. <laughs> but mature Christians, it means choosing to remain silent Amen. when our words yes. would cause harm. Yes, sir. Now, it's a challenge. Yes, sir. But it's a challenge we ought to face if we're going to be mature Christians. Yes, yeah. Our tongue there are, it's a tool, it's a torch, and it's a telltale. Come on now. Let us use it wisely, church. Research conducted by Dr. Andrew Newberg, a new neuroscientist at Thomas Jefferson University, and Mark Robert Waldman, a communications expert, revealed that negative words can actually change the structure. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, my brain. Come on, man. I think about last night I was looking through the TV channel and I was trying to find something positive, something encouraging. I couldn't find nothing. <laughs> 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 nothing but a bunch of negative mess. Everything. Either, either it, was, it was killing and cheating and lying and, 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 and disgusting. And I, I, I was like, Lord have mercy. Turn it on. <laughs> I turned it off. <laughs> Listen, our words can literally shape the reality of our lives. And I'm going to stop right there for today. The heart manages our mouth. I remember when I was a teenager, I began to read. I've been working on this all my life, and I still, it's still a struggle. Sometimes I feel so bad after I've said a bunch of negative stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If, I, if I've criticized somebody or, or, or something, and sometimes it just it burdens me. Yeah, yeah. I, used, I read a book when I was in my teenage called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. And our minds are just like computers. You got all this garbage going in, mm -hmm. and what ain't nothing can come out but garbage. Right. Yeah. But listen, I, I, you know, I remember, you know, even myself. I, I, I've said some things, even in church, I never should have said. Come on, man. And I ask God, I ask God, to be, don't bring that in here. I, I, I say all the time, when you, when you step inside that door, we, we got a tiptoe. We ought, we ought to think about where we are. It's true. It's true. You know what? I thank you to say this morning. I thank you, quite for the spirit in this place this morning. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Because I heard more than sounds and voices. I heard. Lastly, I'm going to say this in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and 20. It says, The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat of its fruits. The Bible tells us that one day, one day, we will all have to account for every empty word that comes out of our mouth. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm going to suggest to you that little piece of paper, put it in your pocket, read it a day or two yeah. this week. That's good. Just, just remind yourself, because I have to do, I have to remind myself all the time. God's mm -hmm. awful good. Yes, yes, he is. And He does surgery on us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he does surgery on us. He, he, he takes, he goes, he cuts us and takes the heart out and puts a brand new heart in. And nobody can tell that we've had surgery until we speak. Woo! Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm.